Today, we're going to look at how to set up a wireless network for sharing files, printers, and broadband internet access between several computers. For equipment, you'll need a Wi-Fi router, sometimes called a gateway, and a Wi-Fi client or adapter for each device you want to put on the network. For notebooks that don't have wireless built in, your best bet is a PC card. The easiest way to go for desktops is a USB adapter. If possible, we recommend that you buy all of your wireless equipment from the same vendor and that it all uses the same wireless standard. While some standards such as 802.11b and 802.11g are compatible, using them at the same time can reduce your network speed. Gather the information your ISP gave you about your broadband connection, a login ID and password, for example. If you happen to have a fixed IP address, you'll need to know it, as well as the gateway and domain name server addresses. For our demonstration, we have a broadband connection going into a PC running Windows XP with an Ethernet port, and a Wi-Fi router with at least one free local area network and one wide area network port. The first step is to connect the cables. Take the cable coming from your broadband modem and remove it, plugging it into the router's wide area network port. Take another Ethernet cable and attach one end to a local area network port on the router and the other to your PC's Ethernet port. Don't forget to plug your router into a power source. Following the vendor's instructions, you'll now configure the router, typically by launching a browser and typing in the browser's default factory IP address. This will bring you to a series of screens that actually manage the software built into the router. You won't need to deal with all of the screens, but at the very least you'll want to make the following three configurations. First, change the wireless network's name or SSID from the factory default. Second, enter your broadband information like login ID and password, and if necessary, a fixed IP address and server addresses. Lastly, secure your network by choosing an encryption key. If you can, meaning if all your network gear supports it, be sure to use the more recent and more powerful WPA or WPA2 encryption methods rather than the older, weaker WEP. If you have older equipment that supports only WEP, always choose the 128-bit form rather than the 40-bit form. Now you're ready to disconnect the PC from the router, install your Wi-Fi card or adapter and start working wirelessly. With Windows XP, you should get a pop-up window that displays your new network ID on a list of available wireless networks. If you secured your network, you'll have to enter the encryption key. And if you're using earlier versions of Windows, you may have a few more setup steps during the installation of the Wi-Fi client device. Now launch a browser to see if you succeeded. Time for this project is around 30 to 60 minutes. Cost will run you between $70 and $180 for a router and $50 to $100 for each PC card or USB adapter, depending on the standard you've chosen. Once you're up and running, you should change your encryption key every month to better secure your network.